So in your experience, what are some of the common mistakes that developers make when seeking commercial development finance? And how can well, they avoid them? <laughs> there's, there's plenty of mistakes. To be honest, mm. I've been in the game for long enough. Um, yeah. But obviously not every developer walks into a project expecting to, to uh, not make any mistakes. You've got to you know, have worst case scenarios. But uh, I think uh, of late, the last you know, six to 12 months, um, probably I would say emotional buying, right? So uh, they're just seeing, hearing all these stories of people making projects and finishing and prof you know, profiting and it's great, looks great, sounds great. So the emotional, if you go out there, maybe go to an auction, Raise up the hand, just love that project and just have to have to buy that site, for example. Um, so maybe too emotional, um, outbidding other buyers and yeah. just have to have it for whatever reason. Um, and uh, because of that, they might be paying a premium. So maybe 10, 15, 20% more than what mm. the market rate might be for that property. Uh, so yeah, I would say that would probably be a number one criteria because um, when you look at a feasibility, what can change uh, the sales prices or the sales prices can't move too much. Uh, build costs are pretty much there. It's not escalating. So the only last thing that can move is the purchase price, the land or the property. So if you talk to any property valuer, that's what is changing these days. The GRs, they're about cost to build somewhat there. It's yeah. the land value that's dropping. So yeah. um, that's the key. So try not to be too emotional. Um, do your numbers. Uh, do your calculations. Be willing to walk away. Um, you know, if it takes you 10 20, 30 properties to have a look at before you buy, do that homework, spend that extra time, because uh, that's when you make your profit when you're buying it, not when you sell at the end. It's the beginning. So, um, right, right. yeah, it's an emotion. So use your head, not your heart. Yeah. And, and, and what about like density of, of the dwellings on the site? So, for example, they might go to auction, you know, bearing in mind that they could get four or five dwellings on it. In reality, when they go to planning, then it can only stick to two or three. Then that could be a very, very costly mistake as well, yeah? Absolutely. So, again, do your homework. Uh, get a good team around you. So getting the right um, uh, town planner um, is very important. Uh, they understand that shire, the council, they've got connections, they've been there before, they know them. Um, they know what's current limit and then maybe what is possible. So you can have some preliminary discussions with council uh, before you formally launch the DA. So those meetings can help you a lot, give you an idea uh, if you're buying a site, uh, is it possible to get that height uh, that you're planning or can you maybe go beyond? Mm. Um, that's obviously you know, where your upside is if you can. Uh, most of us think, oh, okay, uh, the past sites in that area, that street, I've only been getting four levels, so all I can do is four levels. Maybe talk to council, you might know some things. So if you go a little bit down basement, maybe go a bit more parking, maybe you can go another level up mm. uh, or it's near a train station, um, yeah. you know, Todd. Um, you know, traffic, uh, I guess, transport orientated developments, you can get high height, for example. That can make a big difference to your profit margin. Um, we had a client in the Gold Coast some years ago. Um, most people had certain heights uh, because they bought it well and they held it for some time. Uh, the council changed, and obviously through that time, they could get a lot higher height. I think it was like five, six stories extra. Um, wow. So because of that... That was massive profit that increased uh, to them. So that was all upside to them, and they did very well from it. Um, so, yeah, that, uh, of course, there's a risk of the other side of it too. You know, council could change some plans, mm. um, so that could impact it heavily again. Um, so you just got to be able to pivot accordingly. Um, we've seen markets shift, obviously, yeah. pre-COVID, during COVID, and even post-COVID. So you may have walked into a site thinking, I'm going to do high-rise, then that market may have changed during COVID. People wanted larger floor spaces, so you're targeting maybe four or five bedroom apartments, then uh, maybe single story uh, units. So, and now the market's changing again. There's, there's a huge demand for um, a rentable property, so uh, low affordable type of combination. So you might be rethinking that again. So um, yeah, it's going to be learned to read the market, try to plan ahead, um, and then you know, pivot with that accordingly.